Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Auzu billah min shaitan rajim. Bismillah rahman rahim. My dear conference attendees and viewers, my name is Salman Sajid, and I currently serve as the creative director for Al Islam. My speech, Digital Tools for Chronic Discovery, builds upon the speech I delivered last year, attaching your research to the Holy Quran, where I outlined three personal benefits of doing so. Your research will become easier. You will have a greater worldly success while also improving the quality of your worship. As before, any opinions I present here are not meant to be a commentary or a tafsir. It's just a perspective that inspires me. The Al-Islam team has been busy. We recently unveiled a number of new digital tools, tools that I believe could have changed the history of science had they been available earlier. For example, let's take the case of Louis Pasteur, who Khalifa Rabi talks about in Revelation, Rationality, Knowledge, and Truth. One of the tools Pasteur used to study the behavior of chemical compounds is known as a polarimeter. Like the name suggests, a polarimeter polarizes light waves. It starts with an ordinary light source that emanates light waves in various planes. An optical filter acts like a gate only allowing through light that is traveling along one specific plane. This is known as polarization. If you add a second filter and turn it at a 90 degree angle relative to the first one, then all of the light is blocked and no light gets through. The polarimeter was used to study the molecular properties of chemicals. It has a space in the middle between the two polarizers to place a chemical solution. But what confounded Pasteur was how, for no apparent reason, different solutions of tartaric acid would bend the light waves in the polarimeter enough so that some light made it through to the second polarizer, while some solutions of tartaric acid would not. Pasteur then examined the crystals under a microscope and noticed that they all didn't have the same geometry. There were actually two sets of crystals. Both sets had the same number and size of facets, but the placement of the facets made the two sets of crystals appear to be mirror images of each other, a right and a left. Just like how your right hand has the same structure as your left hand, but they're not identical. So Pasteur carefully separated these crystals and made two solutions, one made up of right-handed tartaric acid crystals and the other from left-handed crystals. Then came his big aha moment. He noticed that solutions made from left-handed crystals shifted the light 30 degrees towards the left whereas solutions made from right-handed crystals shifted the light 30 degrees to the right. This was the discovery of the concept of chirality in chemistry. And it has also since been observed to be a universal characteristic of creation. So the scientific world made, the dis made this discovery in 1848, despite the polarimeter being available since 1816. Could a Muslim scientist have discovered the chirality of nature before Pasteur did? I think so. And I think it would have been more likely to happen if that Muslim scientist had access to Al-Islam's new digital tools for chronic discovery. For example, when confronted with the odd behavior of tartaric acid under polarization, our Muslim scientist could have gone to dev.alislam.ai and typed in, polarization. Since AI understands ideas, it would have presented verses it thought were relevant to the idea of polarization. Like chapter 35, verse 22, nor the shade and heat. Realizing that the word shade is another term for the blocking of light, 
our scientist could have decided to dig deeper. He could have focused on the chronic word for shade, zil, and entered it into Al-Islam Quran's search field. And yes, thanks to AI, the search engine now understands Romanized Arabic. After submitting the search, our Muslim scientists could have come across this verse. Have they not seen that the shadows of everything which Allah has created shift from the right and from the left, prostrating themselves to Allah while they are being humbled? I'll repeat it again. Have they not seen that the shadows of everything which Allah has created shift from the right and from the left? And things can go even deeper if we allow ourselves to ponder over the word zil. What if we allowed ourselves to consider that a zil isn't only the darkness that is cast when light interacts with an object, but also what is cast when light interacts with a solution? But we can go even deeper. Searching for zil in the new Al-Islam search engine brings up this line from the promised Messiah in Hakikat al-Wahi. Indeed, our prophet is Khatam al-Anbiya. There's no prophet after him other than the one who is illuminated with his light and whose advent is a zil of his advent. With this expanded notion of zil, we see how it's richer than the English word shadow. That is, the promised Messiah didn't block the light of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Instead, he perfectly passed it through without any adulteration or reduction. Look how beautifully Islam expounds upon science and science expounds upon Islam. In closing, this is why I think by using Al-Islam's digital tools and the world's scientific tools, our Muslim scientists could have been the first to discover what's been called the greatest chemical realization of the 19th century. Allahu alam, Allah knows best. How many other great realizations, big discoveries, or Nobel Prizes are hidden in plain sight within the pages of our beloved Holy Quran? I will leave it to you to answer that question. Jazakallah.